Hey everybody, it's Kevin at Kev's Hobbies. In my uh, last video, I uh, went over that I bought uh, a new iPilot Link, and I promised that uh, my next video, uh, I was going to be installing, replacing the iPilot with the iPilot Link here on my Minn Kota Taroba with a 55 pound uh, thrust 12 volt, um, 55 inch uh, Taroba. So that's what I'm gonna do today. All I'm doing today is I'm replacing the head and I'm gonna show you essentially, hopefully how easy it is to do or difficult for that matter. I've never done it before, but I'm gonna, I'm thinking that it, it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, and then in uh, my next video after that, I'll be hooking up uh, the five port ethernet uh, switch and uh, and getting my two hummingbirds uh, all linked to my uh, iPilot link and uh, show you how it works. So um, without further ado, I guess we're gonna get started. First thing I wanna do is disconnect my Taroba from power. I've got, I've got my battery on charging right now, so definitely don't want power on there while I'm doing this. So that's number one step. Um, there are four Phillips screws that hold this head on uh, fairly straightforward one two three four you need a kind of a longer shaft screwdriver um, so I'll just get started and try to get this in there to start removing it there we go I don't know how long the screws are wouldn't imagine they're very long but if they put Loctite on these you can kind of feel it kind of snap loose when you first start to unscrew these machine bolts Harder than I thought for trying to find this. Get the Phillips to seat in there. It's a deep well, so you can't really see in there very well. Okay, so nothing to it again. Here's the head, pops right off. There is a uh, power connection to it right here. Uh, I'm gonna guess this is both power and GPS for it. Here is the new head right here. Now. A new head comes with Ethernet right here. And uh, so there's going to be a little bit of adjustment uh, for that uh, Ethernet cord right there. Um, so they, 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 they gave some hardware there. But I just wanted to see uh, if there was anything to, and you can kind of see. If you can kind of see that, let's show, show that, uh, how that uh, power switch gets plugged in there. I wanted to see if there was any release or anything like that, so I don't end up screwing anything up, but it doesn't look like it. It just kind of looks like it kind of wiggles itself out. That's it. Okay, and there is my head. Now, again, I can either keep this for rainy day in case my link goes bad or I could sell it and maybe get some money back 
So as you can see, there is a little key there on it, right there. That goes that's up, straight up, and that aligns with the little key right there. So that plugs in sort of like right there. That's all there is to it. Okay, now the next part of this is the Ethernet cable. Uh, now I can see right now that that ain't going to fit in this little hole right here. So what they did do So they sent this little hardware kit right here. I'm gonna get this back so you can see it. Oh, that's the puck. Wrong, wrong hardware kit. Let me get a different one. sent this little hardware kit right here. It's a 30 foot ethernet extension cable to this. And um, it also comes with this little adapter right here, um, which replaces this part right here. And uh, I just have to figure out how in the world I can get that out of there. I think there's two screws right here and here, and this will just come out. And then you can just replace it with this. Uh, so that you can feed uh, the ethernet port in. However, I think I should be able to just, because this looks identical actually, so maybe I don't have to, okay? So let's just see. First thing we're gonna do is take out these two screws here. good spot as any for it okay all right so that was easy almost too easy uh, I wish I had clips for this don't have wire cutters for this, so I'll just have to be careful here. Okay, got that. Got that. Okay. So, I'm going to feed this out. Get all the line untangled. All right, so I think that would go in just like that. And that would get fed right along this little 
cord here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna feed it right down this. cord Try not to get it kinked going through there we go okay Okay, now that, we're just going to wrap up for now and set it aside right there. Alright, so now we're going to put this back. that in there now we just take the two screws put those back uh, yeah you know that hardware like I said might be a little redundant in here uh, you can see that that was the part right there but I didn't have to replace it so that will go if I sell my other head um, that will go with this um, so that next person buying that will have that equipment so that's a good thing all right and here's the other screw one of the tricks to screwing i know screwing is uh, actually a uh, pretty easy task but if you rotate it backwards like a half a turn it'll actually seat better um, and you'll especially when you're doing it with some plastic it, it's less of a chance that you're gonna cross thread it and when you cross thread it, that's when you have real problems so uh, kind of like a little maintenance guide yeah. tip I guess uh, you could say There's the head right there. Okay, the screws are already in there. I never took them out all the way. So I am just gonna kinda get them started here. Again, I'm back, screwing it backwards before I start threading it in, so less of a chance to uh, cross thread them. Tight. 
these I didn't do tight, so I'm going to go back to them. Very difficult to find it. There it is. Okay, that one for sure I didn't. Okay. And you'll be able to see, you'll be able to check around and see if you have a really good seal here around everything. So uh, there, that's all there is to it. Um, you know, on a simplicity scale uh, from one to 10, or a difficulty scale, I should say, from one to 10, I'd probably give this a uh, four, maybe, out of uh, 10 for um, difficulty. So not too, not too bad, not too bad at all. Again, uh, I have the ethernet cable here. Uh, I will do something with that uh, coming up in our next video. Uh, when I hook all this together, I'm still debating about where to put my uh, five port uh, ethernet switch. Um, However, I do have the remote here. Um, I realize I don't have this hooked up to, uh, to anything. However, it still should work, right? So I'm gonna open up this more than difficult to open case here. And it's big L LCD screen. Um, one of the things that you're going to notice um, on here is that uh, now, now with my battery for my iPilot, it came with I think three AAA lithium batteries. They were not rechargeable, but in two years, uh, it's still showing a full charge. Uh, I've heard reports that this remote right here won't last a day. But it is rechargeable, so you have to charge it every day, every time you want to use it. Um, so I'm just throwing that out there for you to uh, think about. Um, this does have a, uh, you know, the charging port actually is is right here. Pops it out. And there it is. There's the charging port right there. So I can see that ripping off fairly easily. And then there is a uh, carabiner spot right here on it. However, funny part is, it did not come with a carabiner or a hanger of any kind. So, um, I find that a little disappointing uh, for sure. This should have come with a carabiner on it. Um, my last one came with, you know, a care, or, you know, it's like a little rope, uh, so you can hang it over, over your neck or hang it from your, your uh, belt loop. Um, and this one didn't come with anything. So have to use the one that came with my other unit, uh, or buy one or something like that. And, um, so that's disappointing that it didn't come with that. Uh, so, okay, let's, uh. I'm gonna unplug from the battery. I'm gonna plug this bag in. Okay. I'm actually gonna set it up or deploy it. Just gotta be careful that I uh, but I do have to pair it. Okay, press the little check mark key here to turn it on. Then you gotta read the directions, which you can't read in the uh, full sunlight here. You're responsible for the safe and 
prudent you operation of your uh, vessel blah 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 I agree you didn't hear the blah 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 part honest lawyers you didn't hear that uh, motor not found well, that's because it's not on okay so I gotta turn it on number one it's got a half charge to it So it has a, has a few options on here. It says, uh, motor not found, it says go to eye track, waypoint mark, go to waypoint, options and system. Um, now I can click on the motor not found, but I'd rather do system. Touch screen, menu, update software, pair. Okay, so we gotta pair these two together. So. Let me go around and uh, get my little one. Okay. So there's a pair button right here. So I will say pair. And I think I gotta hold this down while it's scanning. There it is. And boom, that was fast. That paired it like really fast. So the good news is, is that this motor, this remote, um, these buttons here are I'm all familiar with because uh, of that. Th these are all on my other remote. Now there's a lot of options here about that. That has to do with the iPilot link going to a specific waypoint or tracking a contour, things like that. But um, you know, for the uh, for the motor, it's pretty good. So um, let's just take a look and see if we can. Uh... So there, there, there's the. The uh, I just turned uh, the prop on. I'm at two and a half now. I didn't realize how slow that really was three is pretty going pretty good so that's good um, so then you can rotate the head here so that that's no slower no faster than uh, my iPilot now uh, after I bought this I went on forum and I was talking to some guys that I hang out with uh, on uh, tin boats and uh, one guy said he just absolutely hated uh, is our pilot link and uh, you know I, I, I think uh, it has to do with getting used to technology technology can be difficult number one you have to use it let's turn this off uh, before I accidentally cut my leg off um, you have to use it to get some muscle memory so you can remember how to how to how to use it um, when I first got my iPilot, uh, I was struggling with it. It, it was something that was foreign to me. Um, I use the remote only. Uh, the foot pedal is still foreign to me, except for I could click on the spot lock. I knew where that was. Um, so I never grew up with a pedal or anything like that. Mostly I grew up with oars. Uh, but I can understand technology being um, a challenge for a lot of people. Um, I enjoy a challenge. Um, you know, my father was... Uh, technology averse you know the biggest technology he ever had was a uh, you know the old Lawrence uh, flasher uh, sonar that's all he ever had and he rarely used that at, at best he fished he was one of the best fishermen I ever knew um, he triangulated by trees and, and uh, landmarks um, where he was on the lake to find his spots that he found um, he looked at maps to find where old roads were, where a bridge went down back in the 1920s. I mean, he was like that. That's how he did things. But if you handed him a cell phone, 
even the most basic cell phone, he was lost. He just, it, it just wasn't anything he was interested in, and he just wanted to pick up the phone and dial it. That's all he ever wanted to do, and God, God rest his soul. Um, my mom, on the other hand, she loved tech, you know, she wanted to learn technology, but um, so she wouldn't get le left behind. So she's she's pretty good at, at uh, sitting at the computer and things like that. But uh, even the, the new technology as it's coming out with cell phones and whatnot becomes very, very challenging as you get older. So, you know, it's good to get into it and play with it. Honestly, reading um, doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Watching videos is a really helpful. Um, way to go about uh, getting into this uh, just to give you a start but you got to get out in the water and you got to use it and yes it, it take you, you know starting to get to, to use it takes away from what you're out there for anyways which is fishing so you know maybe just put the rods away for a while and um, learn how to use your boat to its fullest extent do you have to have something like this? Absolutely not. You don't need this technology. Um, you can catch plenty of fish without it. Uh, it does it add another tool in your toolbox? Absolutely. Um, you know, so sometimes it's just kind of nice hitting a contour and you just know, or a, a track. See, I would hit a track more than I would a contour. Um, like this spring, I was finding walleyes along probably 300 feet of this shoreline go further than that and I was done and so I would have to you know keep adjusting um, as I was going and then turn around and then go back now wouldn't it be nice to just hit hit a button and just slowly track that make a track all the way and then turn around and then follow that exact track back and then do the same thing I was catching walleyes I was there for three hours I was catching walleyes left and right it was great uh, but wouldn't it be nice to be hands-free and not have to do that? A trolling motor could do that all that for you. It just turns around and goes right back the track. Um, so that's why I got it. Um, anyways, so that's it. You can tell how easy it was pairing it, putting it together. Uh, it's all ready to go. Now, uh, I'm my next video, I'm going to set it up. I'm going to link uh, to my two Humminbird G4N units and... Uh, and five port ethernet switch and uh, stay tuned for that video and then we'll uh, take this all out in the lake and uh, you know see it in real application now one of the neat things that I I was I'd never really give this much thought and this is just a side note to this and, and I'll talk more about it in my next video I didn't really pay attention you now my each hummingbird has GPS in the bird itself and my Minn Kota has GPS in there so when you're going to a waypoint which uh, unit do you want um, the unit to choose because you now I sit back there generally and I, that's where I fish. I fish from the back. I, I don't. I don't fish from the front. If you're, you know, you got somebody fishing with you, um, you know, they'll be up here. Or some people just love to fish from the front. So you gotta um, think about that when you're setting up how you want your uh, your GPS. Now I can choose my hummingbirds and my Minkota to go to a waypoint based on that GPS unit versus that one because this GPS unit or, or this one is about 12 feet from that one so if you mark yourself a brush pile small brush pile out there in uh, you know 20 foot of water and you go to the waypoint but your GPS is off of this one you're going your brush pile is going to be right below your your Minn Kota trolling motor rather than where you're fishing you're fishing 12 foot away from it so you might not be on the brush pile so that's something to keep in mind um, if you fish up front pick one of these you know either your hummingbird up here or your Minn Kota that's where you want your uh, um, your waypoint to uh, to pick from or if you're sitting back there you want 
the, that Humminbird GPS unit to be the one that goes to the waypoint so that that thing is within a couple feet of, you know, your position in the back of the boat. I always thought that was a pretty cool thing. I never really gave that much thought. Not to mention, um, you know, my sonar uh, is right here on this one, and it's in the back of the boat for my other unit. Um, so I use the sonar, this sonar for that, and that sonar for that unit, and that one's DI and, and SI. Uh, but also, my transducer is five feet behind my uh, my Humminbird. Um, so for an SI and DI, it doesn't really matter because you, know, you can scroll on the screen and pick a spot and GPS that exact spot. Um, and it should take you to that where your sonar picked it up, where your, where your head was when the sonar picked that up. Um, so that's just something to think about when you're positioning your boat over any kind of structure and you've got, you know, uh, you know multiple units linked together. So that's it. Till next time, take care. This is Kevin at Kev's Hobbies. Good luck fishing. Okay, I just wanted to add an addendum to this. Um, I looked in one of the packages, one of the other packages besides the remote, and it did come with the carabiner uh, right here. And it also came with a charging plug uh, and a um, cigarette lighter adapter for it. Uh, don't need that for my boat, but some boats, uh, all you have is a cigarette lighter adapter. So uh, all the components did come with my uh, iPilot link. I just had to open up different packages to uh, to find it. So that's it.